Right. Right. So, order of the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance. The flag of the United States of America. To the Republic and one nation under God, and it's all the repeat that I have brought on. Johnson. Yeah. Here. Alderman Rita. Alderman Toyo. Here. Alderman E. Alderman Carr. Here. Alderman Rowe. Here. Five minutes. Thank you. I'm going to start with a reminder because I don't forget we do have a committee to hold tomorrow night at 6 p.m. The last meeting of the year. We have a presentation of general proceedings, motion to approve city council minutes from the November 22nd, 2022 regular meeting of the city council. Is there a motion? Motion by Alvin Carr, Senator Alvin Montoya. Any questions? Question to the roll. Alvin Johnson? Aye. Alvin Fairwell? Aye. Alvin Montoya? Aye. Alvin Carr? Aye. Alvin Roll? Aye. Bye bye, John. Motion carries. Public comments. Any public comments? Any public comments? Any public comments? Moving on, we have a live presentation. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for your time tonight. I will be brief with a few kind of big picture comments on the 2021 financial statement audit. Um, first, before I get started, I just want to thank Tom, Mark, Moore. Um, they put up with us throughout the course of the audit. They have a lot to do on the day to day. Um, as they get through their normal course of business and we come in and ask a million questions, have them pull a bunch of stuff for us, and then we leave. Um, so without their uh, ability to be responsive and provide us what we need and do the work, you allow us to do our work, you got to them get done uh, in a timely fashion. So I just want to thank them. Uh, you have a good group of people who are really made sure things were ready for us so we can get things done and issued before that notice calendar year um, and try to get you guys uh, back in the regular cadence for the 2022 audit going forward. Um, so with, within the scope of the audit, I know we sent to some more trial versions of the various reports. There are a number of different sta uh, statements that we issued. I'll go over all of them very briefly. Um, city financial statements, the two pension fund reports, uh, the TIP compliance report, and then there's what's called the Gagas report or the Yellow Book report, which I'll explain very briefly what that is. Um, there's also audit results communication. So the first number of those reports are all really reflective of how your operations were in here in various ways. For the financial statements, the city's financial statements, the primary document, um, we were able to give what's called an unmodified opinion. That means that we were able to give the highest level assurance we can, of course, our standards to say that the information in there is uh, accurate and can be used uh, to have a good, clear depiction of the city's financial health. It doesn't mean we get every dollar, every penny. Um, it's all within reason. Um, so, uh, even if there are minor variances and differences in there, it doesn't impact or skew the financial results and health of the city. Um, one thing to note, the library, which is a component of the city, uh, is audited by another firm. We get that information and incorporate the rest of the reform, all the numbers in there beyond the library. We go and we work through that and we audit that. When you go and read the finances themselves, I always say the, the best thing for your buck is the management discussion analysis that provides you the high level summary of everything that happened during the year. So as you move from front to back, it kind of goes from high level to minutia uh, as you go through. So if you're going to really focus on a singular area, you get most information about the big things that happen, that MDNA section is really where you're going to find the kind of the, the greatest value, if you will. Everything from there is really more fun to detail that kind of underlies that. Um, just a few quick uh, items. I don't spend too much time on numbers, but a few things to point out. Um, I know this is a little bit old information, so you know, it's just but something to point out is you know throughout for 2021. Passenger your fund reflected a operating surplus for the year, which is great. Um, the general fund in particular had a surplus of almost $2 million uh, in 2021, uh, primarily due to expenditures being below budget and revenue exceeding expectations. Um, additionally, your other criminal fund had about $3.5 million over budget cumulatively for all of them. And your water fund and your golf course funds also had surpluses. Um, one thing to note with those funds, because there are kind of uh, almost like business oriented, right? You're, you're operating a utility uh, for the water and the golf course is kind of a business in, in a sense. It's reported differently. So that information includes just not cash in, capped out, but some kind of accounting stuff, right? If you will, with things like depreciation, um, capital assets, some other stuff on there. So it's not reflective of money in and out the door. But the fact that you're having a surplus in those funds during the year is always pretty healthy because a lot of those, what we call proprietary funds, are those funds that operate 
and the businesses are supposed to be operating properly, but a lot of them do not. So the fact that you operate at a profit for the year is a really good thing and shows some strength in 2021 for those. Uh, one thing to note also is for pension funding, which is also reflected in the two pension reports, um, both funds at a surplus during the year in 2021, reflective of the of really the investment performance at the time. A lot of that is going to go away in 2022, obviously. Um, same with IMR, which is not a fund, but those that information is on your financial statements. It reflects kind of the city's piece of IMRF, um, which was at a actually overfunded in 2021, uh, about six million in total. Um, that was due to some really, really strong investment performance over the last few years. I do know they're taking a hit, probably not as much as everybody else because they do a really good job. Um, but we're expecting to see some declines there. Um, the hope is that things are well funded enough where we're main basically 100% funded or they're about. So just something to know that we get in the 2022's audit um, and going forward, you're going to see some declines in the pension funding just because of the investment performances. Um, it's kind of really solely dependent on that uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, additionally, uh, so that's really kind of the, the big picture of the big things on the city's financial statements. The pension financial statements are separately issued documents. That information we provide also unmodified opinions for specifically on those funds, the police and fire funds. That's also rolled into the city's financial statements as well. Uh, getting away from the actual numbers, we do a lot of other stuff down with the numbers themselves. We do look at compliance with a lot of uh, rules and regulations, particularly with your gifts. Um, we do a deep dive on how the funds are spent in particular and some other compliance requirements. Uh, we're glad to report we identified no findings of non-compliance. So it's a clean opinion, if you will, on your tips and for 2021. Uh, additionally, uh, another report is called a uh, bunch of the acronyms, GAGUS report, Yellow Book report. Basically, it's the other opinion in there. Um, because of the requirements by the state, which is the Government Accountability Transparency Unit, we have to do a bunch of other procedures um, and provide a separate little report, 12 pages only, um, where we spend a little more time doing some more auto work, but primarily looking at internal control and processes, identifying where there's things where area of improvement or, or risks or gaps in controls. Um, we did identify a few things in there. A lot of those go back to where your current group is in, and they've already incorporated a lot of changes um, to address those. Some of it is kind of nature of the beast, small city government. You only have so many people to do things. We unfortunately kind of have to work off of ideal world, unlimited people, unlimited resources. So some of those things we're going to be working with uh, your team to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of, okay, how can we get creative to address risks? Just to make sure you guys are protected from a financial standpoint year to year. So this year, there are a few comments. We knew that going in. Um, there were going to be some comments reflected there. The whole going in 2022, actually, we already know. We expect some of those to go away um, based on the actions the city's already taken to address them before we started the audit. Which is great, right? Thanks to find things that you guys already know about uh, so that we can work together and make sure the response is as still as possible. Additionally, there are some other reports that we are going to issue. We're working with Lauren on. Uh, they can finalize some more statutory stuff. There's some filings with the state comptroller's office with the government accountability transparency unit. Uh, they're just basically different ways to present your financial information to them in the format they want. Something that's something we do every year. We'll be wrapping up in the next week or so. Lastly, so all those reports are a bunch of the things that happen for you during the year. Really, the thing coming, the things coming from us in those reports are the opinions um, saying that things look clean, things look good. Um, the other document that's in there is, is the results and insights letter. What that is, is coming from us. So that's fully what do we see? You guys as the government body, we have to communicate certain things to We're required to by our standard and tell you how things went. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Some of it's boilerplate and really boring, some of it is more informative how things went. Generally speaking, when this letter is boring, that's good. This letter is boring. Basically, what it means is things went well. We, of course, got it. We identified no difficulties. We had no disagreements with the management, no major issues. We did communicate the same findings and comments we had in that yellow book report. They were reflected in there, and we had to put them in a couple different spots. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, the audit plan, one important plan, there was something we did not foresee that had to change what we did. You know, new risks or unexpected things we saw there in course you got it, which is great because that's not always the case. Um, additionally, in there, there's some other information. For the view of the growing body, there is a link in the electronic document to some resources the firm provides. They rotate it and change it periodically. Some of it's pertinent, some of it's not, um, but it's always worth looking at. It's not all accounting related. It could be economic, it could be bond related, it could be all sorts of different stuff. Um, so it's something you, you want to take a peek. There's also good information out there. Again, some of the relevant, some of the not. 
The last thing in there I do want to point out is you know, the, the accounting standards. If you want to have something to put you sleep at night, um, know what's coming in the pipeline, um, is the two way audit communication section. What that is, covers a couple things. One, it communicates to you kind of the plan for next year for 2022, um, kind of gets some of those required communications out of the way, but also really is a reminder that uh, we work for you, right? We work with your team on a day to day, but really you're the ones who hire us, engage us to do the audit. So if there's ever a time where you have questions, concerns, just want to bounce some things off of us. We're always available. We're always open. Lauren knows every single way to get hold of me. I can't escape her. So if anything ever were to come up or just want to have a conversation about something, just to know more, we're always available to you. We do work for you. So I'd like to make a point to say that um, when I put up to you in the audit for you, just as a reminder. But that kind of the big picture. So if you have any questions, questions on the building? Yeah. Yes. Did you say, did you state that the uh, golf course fund was, was healthy? Was, uh, For 2021, it had a hundred and forty-four thousand dollar surplus. Now that is a combination of cash in and out plus accounting stuff. Like so, really for the golf course fund, if you're on my head, that hundred forty-four surplus actually includes what's depreciation, basically taking old assets and kind of running the faucet through over the course of time. So. That includes some old expenditures that actually, instead of hitting your bottom line at one point, it takes over the course of a year. So that includes a number of different things. And remember, cash off my hand was up for the year. Don't hold me to that completely. There is a statement in there um, that does speak to <laughs> cash in and out. Uh, so there's statements for the $140,000 surplus. There's another statement called the cash flow statement that actually is focused on money and out the door. Um, I don't know in front of me, um, but that will be tell you where, where cash is more uh, day to day operating. Sam, where it sounds familiar, Alderman, when I come to that. That's if you're right. But vertically, expenses were very low that year. Right, right. There wasn't much going on. So I think there was some some limited activity during the year. Um, but still, 144000 more surplus in that fund is, is sizable given the scope of operations for the year. Any other questions from the Alderman? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And everybody has your contact information. If not, uh, we'll get it to them. Absolutely. The follow up. All right. Thank so, you very thank much. You. Moving on to the mayor's report, we have a motion for approval of payroll for November 25th, 2022, in the amount of $383,094.89. Is there a motion? Welcome to the roll. Second by Alvin Carr. Any questions? Clerk, please do the roll. Alvin Johnson. Aye. Alvin Farewell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Hall. Aye. Bye bye, Your Honor. Next, we have D. Motion for approval of payroll for December 9, 2022, in the amount of 400,534 41 cents. Is there a motion? I'm Alderman Farron Hall, second by Alderman Wall. Any questions? Clerk, please do the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Farron Hall. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Wall. Aye. Bye bye, Your Honor. Thank you, Motion carries. C. Motion for approval of accounts payable in the amount of 773, 241, and 39 cents. Motion, Alderman Farnell, second by Alderman Bull. A question? Alderman? Uh, I apologize. Uh, I usually communicate with Mark in advance, um, and, uh, but I've spent about three hours a day still on physical therapy, powered by a little crying. So <laughs> don't have quite the time I did. So I'm going to start with three questions tonight on the uh, payables. Uh, let's see. First off, um, a couple of things uh, here about um, you know um, facade improvements. Uh, we are approving the payment to the Eagle for seventy five hundred dollars uh, for the park for the parking lot, which is a certainly worthy um, activity. I just was I was just surprised to see it because I don't think we've done a parking lot before. I just wanted to ask about the parameters. Okay. Anything on the exterior of the property that can be seen from the street. Okay, so even roofing, if it can be seen from the street, okay. for example, right. like Kathy's Flowers, the peak right. of her cupola, and the right, but not a flat roof. Yeah, it's helpful to know okay. for the future. Um, and then, um, Ophelia's Bank was also $7,500. Um, I guess I'm just asking here, um, the business has not opened yet, um, and they've never, so far I would guess, they've never paid into the tax fund, and maybe there's Maybe it's all okay, but it's just, and, and maybe it's a little bit speculative because I don't know when or if they're going to open. Mm -hmm. um, so that just concerns me a little bit. Um, 
you know, I, I'm going to approve it, but I just kind of. So I, I get clarification on this one myself. The yeah. combination of the mural that faces the right. house lovely, mm -hmm. and their signage. Just the, the, the contributing thing that has nothing to do with the ordinance. Anybody can apply that's a lawn that business district. Okay. So, like for example, service barber shops, hair salons, they don't put any money into this, yeah, okay. but they can apply for it. So there's nothing that says business is over and full, it's just building itself. That's why a landlord can apply for a grant, not just the owner. However, I think that was mostly the mural in the back. That's part of this. Okay, thank you. And the final thing I want to ask about is uh under uh PJK Hill. Uh, we have an $8,500 uh, expenditure for the um, sinkhole sewer repair on Market Street. Um, what was that? Uh, was that a sinkhole that developed as or after the street repair? It was discovered during the street repair. And that area was televised when we did Canal Street. What was that 2018, 2017, 2018? Well, they did a whole neighborhood. They televised and vacuum, which we're going to plan to do the streets the next year. And it must have occurred between that date and this day. Yeah, because it, it's an obvious concern there. Uh, and it's one of the things I'll talk about tomorrow night when we have fire engineering, but um, I just wanted to check that that was what happened and, and the fact that it probably is a situation that may exist elsewhere in our city streets. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? First, we do the roll. Alder Jansen. Aye. Alder Fairmont. Aye. Alder Matoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Roll. Aye. Bye bye, John. Thank you. Next, we have D. An ordinance level taxes in the city of Loyola for Town, Illinois, fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2022, and ending December 31st, 2021. 2022. So, motion. Motion, Alderman Carr, second Alderman Roll. Any questions? Clerk, please do the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Fairwall. Aye. Alderman Machoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Roll. All right. Bye bye. Next, we have E. Nordens, the city of Long Island, County, Illinois, amending Title Five of the Public Works Chapter Fifty under Garbage Section Fifty Point Zero Eight of the City Code to manage street parking. So I went through the titles from the street parking in general. Is there a motion? Question Alvin Fernald, second by Alvin Roll on the question. Alvin Fernald. I just wanted to ask about enforcement of this. Um, well, I okay, when and how. Uh, I certainly understand why we want to get this stuff off the streets. I also do understand sometimes when there's a really big snowstorm, I don't want to go in there the next day and blow people's stuff off the streets. So how's that going to work? I don't know if the police chief wants to talk about this at all, but uh, I'm sure there's discretion. We won't be doing it immediately afterwards or something. It's something that's obvious, like uh, been there for a few days or so. And that would be correct, yeah. Yeah. So if, I, if there's a big snow and you know, I would give them a week or some whatever period of time I think is reasonable, would it be something where we could just send public works out and pick up all this stuff, just be done with it? They, norm they normally do that now. They do that now. Okay. 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 That's what you get out of the way. Of the that like, I understand that would be really justified then. And it's like we did the garbage cans, I believe, yeah. last summer to get them out of the streets. Right. Like everything's a hazard. It's the streets. Yeah. This is the same thing they do. I'd rather not have the police in a lot of time. Well, so public works does remove, especially during the snow, like yeah. you mentioned, back there because they don't want to follow that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Clerk, please do the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Fairwell. Aye. Alderman Matoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Roll. Aye. Bye bye, Alderman. The next we have F. The ordinance was received by Uncle County, Illinois, and I'm entitled. 15 plan usage under chapter 150 building regulations construction section 150.101 construction specifications the city code to address fines related to failure to maintain all street parking areas. Question all the parent walls for a second. All the roll on the question. Not clear to do the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Fairwell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Roll. Aye. Thank you. Next door related H with resolution of the city of Wild Illinois to authorize and approve a purchase and sale agreement with Fast Start Construction for city owned property located at 2135 West 121st place. Is there a motion? Motion by Alderman Roll. Is there a second? Alderman Montoya. Other questions? Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Fairwell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carter. Aye. Alderman Roll. Aye. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, I think I did agent stuff. So. Right, gee, I'm back with you on I think twice. Resolution for the city of Wyoming for County Illinois. Offers an approved purchase and sale agreement with fast start construction for city owned property of 212219 place. So motion. Motion by Alder Rose, second by Alder Montoya on the question. Not to the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Farewell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Rose. Aye. Bye bye, John. Thank you. Motion carries. Under I, resolution of the city of Wyoming for County Illinois to authorize and approve the lease and settlement agreement in case 20 L 5547, as discussed in the last exam. So, motion. Motion, Alvin Carr, second, Alvin Montoya, on the question. Clerk, please do the roll. Alvin Johnson. Aye. Alvin Aye. Alvin Montoya. Aye. Alvin Carr. Aye. Alvin Roll. Aye. Bye bye, John. Thanks, and also another resolution. Authorized to approve release and settlement agreement in case number 22 CH 2905. Is there a motion? Welcome, Melvin Farrell, seconded by Alder Montoya on the question. My clerk, please do the roll. Alder Johnson. Aye. Alder Farrell. Aye. Alder Montoya. Aye. Alder Carr. Aye. Alder Roll. Aye. Bye bye, Your Honor. Thank you. Last one under this business. We move to approve the residence site and roll. I want to clarify all full time city employees placement of the same in the city of Wyoming employee handbook. So motion. Welcome to Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Carr on the question. Clerk, please do the roll. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Farewell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Rule. Aye. Thank you, Mark. Here's our mayor's announcements. Um, just a couple of things again. We have committee with uh, the whole tomorrow at 6 p.m. Your last meeting of the 2022 year. Um, also, I, I was going to talk a little bit about what the author brought up earlier about the streets. Um, I think Burke, if I'm not mistaken, can't come till the January meeting. January meeting, Oliver. But he just planned to discuss everything. He was going to do that anyway, because I wanted to discuss it leading okay. into televising and stuff that needs to be done before next year. I'm going to put a bit together now for another round, very similar to this round. Um, Roughly 50 blocks or so, but he wants to make sure he televised immediately before the construction. What we were going off of uh, when Jim was still here was his knowledge that it was done within the last few years. So, but any of that, all that comes out of water and sewer anyway, because it has to do with the water and sewer. But that specific sewer on Market Street, I was there uh, when they were doing it. I feel like Mayor Daly in Chicago, they don't build it like they used to. That thing was nine feet deep, that sewer. They don't put them in that deep anymore for residential streets. And luckily, the section was only a little break. The break was probably there for a little while, but it was unnoticed because it was so deep. And it wasn't until we skimmed out six, seven inches of asphalt on top, they noticed that there was a void underneath there. So, but I agree with that the televising and also when they vacuum out the catch bases before anything's done next year, regardless if it was done the last four or five years. So, with that being said, street, street work is done for the most part. You know, it's left with some markings here and there, some signage. Uh, landscaping, the back filling is, I believe, all complete. The sod they didn't get to, I know they were already sodding and the weather was still recent. Um, they're going to finish in the spring, along with, I think, 70 degrees are planned to go in along the streets that were just done. Um, and the trees were approved by the Board of Trade Board. So it's good. It's a good summer. We got in on the month on schedule before the end of November. So again, I'll let Burke go more into that in January. That's all I've done with Mayor's comments, City Clerk. I'd like to thank everybody for the lift break and the event before and after success. Um, the fire department, the public works, the uh, police department, everybody from the city went on above and beyond the call of duty. It was, it was awesome. Um, this weekend, the sand will be at York and Western from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Saturday, the reindeer will be in Little Island from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And um, Wednesday, the 21st, I'll be come up and see Santa at York and Western. The New Year's Eve ball drop has been moved to York and Western in front of the Lyric, so we'll start making your plans now. All I have. All right, thank you. Sue Trader. Uh, one comment here. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Tom Clark for, and, uh, for all the work they did for cranking out uh, this year's 2021. Audit in 2022. No, that wasn't the case on our, on our last audit, but um, thank you guys for all the hard work you guys put in the point of it. Really major to me to get that done. Um, and then all I have is uh, I can get a for uh, monthly treasures report ending 
We run the billion twenty twenty two. It's the motion of the roll second out of car on the questions. Clerk, please do the roll. Alderman Jackson. Aye. Alderman Fairwell. Aye. Alderman Montoya. Aye. Alderman Carr. Aye. Alderman Roll. Aye. Bye bye. Thank you, City Attorney. Yeah. All right. City Administrators, we have one ordinance of it. An ordinance for the City of Loyola, the County of Illinois, amending Title Three, Administration, Chapter 34, Personnel Policies, Section 34.06, Policy Rules and Regulations Concerning Contributions for Insurance for Employees to City Code Regarding Employee Insurance Contributions. I believe this just ties it in with the union contracts and whether the union and folks are against bearing each other. Is there any comments from the administration? Is that pretty much it? Yes. All right, is there a motion? Put all the roll, second all the term roll on the question. Clerk, we do the roll. Alderman Jackson? Aye. Alderman Fairwell? Aye. Alderman Montoya? Aye. Alderman Parr? Aye. Alderman Roll? Aye. 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 There, Tom, the chief administrator. Um, just uh, one thing I wanted to offer up uh, to the council. Uh, so the uh, the audit is complete uh, with tonight. The levy will be complete. So our attention now will return to appropriations. Um, so we are going to. We have already started some laying some groundwork here, but uh, throughout the rest of December and January, we'll be doing our individual department meetings with department heads to get their their needs, their wants, uh, etc. Uh, on there, and as we have in the past, we want to continue to do. Uh, we want to give all of them a chance to be a part of those meetings. Uh, so I would just ask that if you are interested in participating in one or more uh, the departmental meetings, just email myself, CC Mark on there, just because from a logistics and scheduling standpoint, um, you know, you need to get lost basically. Um, so, but we do want to make sure that the council knows that they have an opportunity at the ground floor level. Be part of these conversations uh, and be encouraging. So that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions for Tom? Not any announcements, questions, comments? Can you help? Oh, yeah. Uh, there is the employee party at the Lear Theater going until 9 30. If anybody wants to stop in and say hi, to the members there. We stopped in beforehand, but I'll probably stop in again. Uh, all the more I started to hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, the Land Park District. Uh, they've been coming out to help with the busy school release uh, between Whittier and Kerr along the a lot of traffic, a lot of kids coming across. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody involved with the City Light Parade. I thought the parade was better than ever this year, which is already a high bar. Um, really felt like the city looked great. So thank you, everybody that was involved. Thank you. Any other Alderman Johnson? Yes. Um, I also want to thank the people who put together the uh, City Light Parade. Uh, the Untouchables had a great time riding with uh, airline towing. So I want to thank everybody that was involved. Alder Farrell? I just want to welcome the council that um, in our last floor three board uh, meeting that I attended, uh, the grant that has, that has been applied for, and apparently the decision has been made about who is going to get this money to do this tree inventory, which is going to be a really awesome thing if we get it. But there's some bureaucratic process they've got to go through before they announce it. So we're all, you know, waiting with fingers crossed. And I want to thank Mike very much for um, participating and do basically and with a lot of knowledge in the working day meetings. It's going to be very helpful to us. It's nice to see public works as a big source of support. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like everyone else, I want to thank the parade committee for all the work they did. The police department, the fire department, and public courts for all the effort they put in on the parade. Thank you. Mayor, I forgot to mention the uh, public works. I just want to uh, say a special thank you for coming out there and paying attention to some uh, special need projects. Thank you. All right. Nothing else for your motion to adjourn. Dr. Alvin Rolls, Dr. Alvin Turnbull. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.